Want cleaner and easier to maintain solutions for your blueprints? Check the link in the description below for new variables and event systems straight out of the box plugins by Passotti. Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew for Aurora Gameworks and welcome to a short Unreal Engine 4 tutorial uh, explaining how to use the for loop nodes. So the for loop node is good for basically uh, looping a task uh, or, a, or a piece of code over and over and over again for a certain amount of times. You probably don't want to do it for too many times though because that is pretty system resource heavy but let's say maybe like up to a hundred times or something you know depending on your system. Um, so let's just quickly grab our for loop node. So we've got three inputs and three outputs. Now we have uh, executable input and you know you would put in whatever code you want to put in there before depends on your project now our first and last index with most things that are based within Unreal Engine the the uh, counting system in Unreal Engine has a starting point of zero so if we wanted to do a loop ten times we would have to have our first index as a zero and the last index as a nine if you wanted to do it uh, 20 times, then that would be 19, uh, etc, etc, etc. Um, and in our output here, where we've got loop body, this is where we will actually be running the looped code that we want to have happen for a certain amount of uh, times. So just for now, let's go print string. Let's keep that on screen for maybe 10 seconds. Let's give that a nice color. Let's make it bright pink. Uh, so then what we could do uh, into our string, let's get a format text. Um, let's say loop has run. Uh, and then I'm, I'm going to do something uh, interesting here. I'm going to add index. Whoa, that wasn't supposed to happen. Excuse me. Uh, is it the bracket or is it these ones? I really should have tested this before filming. There we go. Okay. So when you use these specific kind of brackets with index here, then you suddenly get an extra node here. So if we go loop has run index times we can then put whatever we want into here and it'll insert itself into this space here so for instance every time our for, uh, our for loop node goes um, it does its first loop its second loop its third loop etc 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 until it gets to 10 uh, our index output here will actually give us that number that corresponds with here so if we go and attach that into index the number should display itself inside there. So then it'll say loop has run uh, one times, two times, three times, etc. So let's put that into our string. And then on completed, let's add another string. And we can say loop has finished. Yay! Cool. So if we compile that and save that, this will just happen on event begin play for this example. Cool. So up at the top left, we have loop has run zero times, one times, etc, etc, etc. We could uh, turn this into a system that has a counting point starting at one uh, instead of zero. So we could just do plus one. And suddenly we've got loop has run one times, two times, three times, and it's starting from a counting point, uh, starting at one. So now something else that we can add to this to uh, make this a little bit more interesting is that on our last index here, uh, 
we could add a randomizer or we could do like a random integer in range so let's say um, you know it could either go uh, twice so putting one in the minimum would mean that it would be a one there you know it would say it's counted twice and let's add a nine back in there and then every time we go uh, you know what I'm actually gonna just real quick let's hook this up to an input uh, the F key cool so now every time I hit the F key it's going to run a random amount of times so you see up in the top left it's got uh, all the way up until loop has run seven times if I do it again that time it only ran three times that time it was only two, three, four, nine, six, six, five, yeah. So you get it. So adding in a randomizer onto here, uh, probably best with a, an integer in range. Um, you know, I would just re recommend putting it with a random integer in range because if you just have a random integer, like who knows how high this could go and who knows how how badly that could break someone's computer so with all that knowledge of knowing how to use the for loop node uh, you can run so many different kinds of uh, gameplay functions with it like for instance imagine that our loop body here has to do with spawning loot in a cave or each time you turn a corner somewhere, you want to have a specific set of enemy characters somewhere. Um, you know, like, it won't be totally randomized. You would always have it so that the loot in a cave is always anything between three and five. Or the, or the enemies that you find when you turn a corner is anywhere between uh, six and nine you know anything like that it's it's really up to you it's it's your game you're making and um you know for that let's say we're doing uh loot in a cave and it could be anything between three and five items uh you would start that at two because two here would be three and then our last one here uh our, our, our random integer in range would be minimum two and four so, yeah, that would mean that it can only do a loop body either three, four, or five times in this example here. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's great for, uh, you know, I, I think it's great for randomizing certain uh, gameplay scenarios. Well, that's it for today's short video on... Uh, teaching you about the for loop node and its certain use cases in your game. Um, if you enjoyed that, please make sure to like the video and, and subscribe for new videos uh, coming out regularly. I've been Andrew, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.